she said, no, no, remember, yoga is more than that. So if you can explain it, uh, explain to, to our <laughs> public what is integral yoga and yoga and all these that you say that you want to achieve with your music. I mean, why the music can help the yoga? Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. It's just like if the word yoga is empty or is intellectual or means the way of the intellectual center. Uh, I mean, yeah, I want to some like to have some to play with the semiotics <laughs> and to understand. Yes. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, what's what really stands out and I like being in India, I did confront a lot of different traditions, a lot of different teachers as well. But my, uh, my musical guru Shantanu Bhattacharya grew up in the Shurabindu ashram and grew up as a, and as his mother, who I call Ma, you know, my, my Bengali mother, I was a part of their family for many, many years and still am in a way. And, and, uh, and so I learned music through their embodied lived experience of what yoga was to them. Um, when I went to learn Esaraj, the, the stringed in instrument that I play, I went and stayed with my guru Abir there in Shantanikatan. And, and again, he's doing a sadhana of music. And I learned what his embodied yogic path was. And it was very different. They're both, they, they both have different goals. In, and I, I mean, now I'm, I'm talking about um, maybe more generally speaking is that there is no one goal to yoga. There's really there's um i mean it's said that there are Sri Aurobindo said there should be as many integral yogas as there are people so that tells us a lot about the nature of you can't um pathologize or you can't uh maybe that's that's the psychological term but you can't um absolutize uh m missing the word but you like make anything absolute in this because it's uh there's no one way and so yeah the yoga of the of the intellect like um jnana yoga raja yoga there'd be there'd be yogas that are traditionally maybe cultivated by people that resonated with that that activated them there's other yogas uh, that are also fundamental to the the experience that work on on different levels like these different kind of um kinds of of experience like bhakti yoga the yoga of of devotion um, there are certain paths that say, well, no, the divine shouldn't shouldn't necessarily be made into, shouldn't be anthropomorphized or like made into have qualities. The divine, I mean, it's qualityless. That's what we privilege. And so in India, I think you're going to find so many different um, goals of the yoga, of yoga, so many different paths. And and Debashish sort of says this very clearly when he says in in general, in a you go to India. And you go to a guru and say, I, I, I'm coming here to learn yoga with you. And then they'll ask you, what's your goal? What, do you, what are you looking for? And then I'll tell you what you can do. And so I, I found that Debashish really clearly articulated this um, uh, to me. But really, it's that your goal of becoming, the goal of who, how do you want to exceed yourself um, is really going to help give you a, a kind of guide you in sense of what direction can I go in to find things that are going to help me realize my goals. So for instance, Sri Aurobindo first approached yoga as a, as a, a national, I mean, as a, a revolutionary um, to fight the colonization of the British. And he was called the, the most dangerous man in India at one point um, because he was so deeply involved and uh, in that, and he was looking to yoga for questions of power. I, I need to know, as a revolutionary, what to do? Absolutely, not sort of just sort of because life and death here, you know. And how can I get power to overcome my oppressors? And if that that was his that was his initial goals. And so, I think that that you know that's just one example. But we all have slightly different goals. Um, and I think that that starting from that basis and really honoring the fact that we all are unique and that we all need to find our, our, I guess, our own way, um, according to our nature and our goals, w you know, what kind of world do we want to live in? Um, 
I think that that that's really powerful for me to think about um, rather than accepting somebody else's goal and their method and saying, well, I respect this great guru or this historical figure, and I'm just going to do their what their yoga. And and but that's going to not necessarily take you to realize any of your goals, <laughs> you know. So I think that that it's it's I'm not able to give um, uh, like a, a very clear or direct answer, but I think that it's really a matter of um, of of kind of like kind of quieting, sitting with yourself, becoming a little contemplative, a little more contemplative, and trying to trying to arrange the elements in your life that really they really activate you. They really give you power and inspiration and and vision and and love. And those things are going to be your tools for your yoga. And so for me, um, you know, I have these different, I mean, I don't only do music, I do other things too. I love cooking. I love cooking Bengali food and, and Indian food. That activates me. And it's part of my mandala. It's part of my yoga. It gets me in touch with with a different material, with a different process, with a different way of pouring myself into it. And it gives me so much energy. And so to me, that's a really strong clue to say that this is my material. Cooking is yoga in a way to me. And so I maybe should have started with this, but it really is the, the, the idea of yoga. The, the, the word means to yoke, to, to join. And so in that sense, it's like whatever is allowing you to join with the divine I think that would be a start. <laughs> yeah, like like uh, maybe to go inside uh, of your virtues, yes, and to, to cry, be, like to a, have joy, or yes, because Christianity, our original language, being, we is, can uh, say mm -hmm. that that joy is yoga is and, this and inner and work or this so inner yes, looking for your own uh, deep, humble inner child. Yes, I mean I don't know if it's that correct or not. Yes, could be. I mean, that could be one person's for sure. I mean, there was just a dissertation actually um, that will be published online through CIS. That is, um, her name's Abhaya Wong, and she just published, uh, well, she just did her dissertation and it was talking about Taoism because she's from China um, and uh, integral yoga and the supermental transformation um, and uh, Jungian inner child work. And so, she found she's finding in that uh, constellation is act it's 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 helping it's probably um working as a yoga for her yeah so again it is not i don't think that anything like i would i would say well it, i can share my experiences and say how music works in this way but that's not i mean that's my experience right so maybe somebody can share that maybe somebody can ex uh, explore it and say i sort of see what you mean or yeah i feel like i I get what you're saying, but I think it's 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 nothing can be absolute here either. So yeah. So, but music is like your yoga, yes, or not? I mean, you you say yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I would. That, that's been the, one of the main materials <laughs> that I've. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, that is like if you play music with consciousness, we are with awareness. I mean, remembering the divine, that is your yoga. If you play music just for fame or for uh, mm -hmm. be appreciated or things like that, then there is no yoga. Yes? I can, I don't know. It's, well, I would agree saying that the, the goal of yoga is to become divine. So if we can agree upon that, which we do, then I would agree. Yes, absolutely. Somebody else might have a different goal of yoga. They might want to have magical, like they want to have like power so that they could, you know, like they can um, like see what other people are thinking or, you know, like there is the city Super tradition powers. of having uh -huh. superpowers, which that's, if that's their goal, then that yoga can be employed to realize those goals. That's part of the tradition that we can get textually and such, but I would say that, well, how does that relate to kind of like the, 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 the meta goal here is to become divine. And are you, are you aiming to get these, this power, like this power to help actualize this in yourself and participate in the divinization of the earth around you? Mm -hmm. Or are you 
aiming to get power so that you can control and manipulate others and create a world in your vision. And th that would be where you'd have to say, well, that's, that's a goal I can't share. <laughs> that is where this uh, metaphor, oh, the, the story of the Lord of the Ring. Yes. <laughs> the dark power and the light power and this guy that is doing all his looking for all these dominate all the world yes? <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know. I just yeah, <laughs> yeah and and like just like the magic traditions or the occult traditions in the west i mean yoga does have its shadow so really everything has everything has its shadow and so i mean there is there is there's black magic there's white magic and there's gray magic and in the west uh or in the east you have le uh, and, uh, i'm not so expert on this but there's the path like tantric path of the left-handed way um which is really the the kind of the blackened way like and there would be a whole like kali the black kali and there would be a whole bunch of imagery and symbology and goals that that people would be um working with those that energy with and so it's it's yeah it's 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 a very complex world and um it's really hard because i think that if everything is one everything is divine and we can all find our own way then it's not a matter of saying well everything that's black or like like meaning black magic i meant to say or um um like everything that has has a kind of more dark or underworld kind of nature we have to eliminate because then you're just you're just ending up in a binary of light of like you know the light over the darkness you know the day over the night and I think that you're just perpetuating another binary. And that's where who decides what is right for somebody else. You know, the Gita is, is all about this. And it's, it's a very just, complex. Yeah, it's a very complex problem. And so, uh -huh. you know, we, we don't want to um, we don't want to end up saying, well, this is my goal. And therefore, this should be everybody's goal. Or this is what I think is um, pure and holistic. And this should be everybody else. Everybody else should agree with me on that. It, it's hard there's more of a relationality and i think there is more of a a musical model of uh that can be i would say in my experience the musical model of improvisation help has helped me see that and and make that in in the world in in like in my involvement of the world um participate when you're playing music with others with no preset score or or preset idea of form you allow the form to emerge intuitively and naturally and you play and you all have deep structures within you. You've played music your whole life. Most people I play music with have played many years, um, if not their whole life. So th there's a lot of experience and there's a lot of shared ambition or goal. I mean, there's, we share the goal. We, we want to play music together, but do we want to play beautiful music together or do we want to play and like, it's, well, what does that mean? What's beautiful music? Something that may sound very disturbing to one person might actually be full of really important potency and energy to somebody else, you know? So it's like trying to avoid the absolutes of that is really hard. And so I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I guess people have to be free to embark upon their yoga in the, in, I guess, you know, if they're going to sincerely and embark uh, and, and kind of, yeah just as sincerely as possible embark upon a, a path of yoga there has to be a trust in that process but if it starts hurting other people and there's there's ethical lines that we need to we definitely need to uh hold on as a society as well so yes um it's complex <laughs> yeah i agree with you well yeah it's complex but also i mean we have to remember that in the physical world well mm -hmm. i'm not sure is what in my mind say you know I mean, it's a lot of polarity, you know, it's always going to be negative and positive and have to be regulated and balanced, you know. I mean, if it's like soup, a lot of good mm -hmm, things, mm -hmm. it's going to be like also a lot of dark matter there because mm -hmm. have to be a balance. If it's not a balance, then something happens. Yes, it's what beautiful. I understand. Uh, beautiful, whatever. yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like and that's where like, like the middle way, you know, Buddha, at, yeah. at one point that was exactly. a very strong theme he was avoiding the extremities of ascetic practices at the time uh, and avoiding the extremities of like what had been codified into um, a very hier hierarchical society that was based on a fixed 
a kind of like a, a, a fixed semiotic code, if you will, of this interface with the divine or with the with the, the 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 radically infinite and the buddha was walking a fine line and sort of experienced both um and i think came down the middle path the middle path you know um we're constantly in the middle of something you know so i think that that idea and that's fundamental like when you when you get into um learning about like when when people i think people start learning about yoga then there is a lot of shared um the praxis is shared to some degree, whether it's Buddhist or Hindu, in, for instance, in um, in the East, where you will be kind of asked to to develop a base of equanimity or equality or peace, shamatha, um, or um, that's sort of like a starting place to say we've we've got to kind of we've got to kind of unbind all of these different kind ways in which we are individuating all the different planes and parts of our being that are trying to individualize through our complex whole of the self and so part of the yogic process i would say that's shared and it's very it is very important is just taking a step back and quieting the mind and quieting the the vital being and the different being be, parts of the being you would identify yeah, yeah and yeah, just yeah. taking a step well, back yeah, and being I mean, that's, that's, saying i, mean, I am this but we i can am use also not we can use all these materials in it. a process of yoga for sure so like so, engaging in you know in, in a shadow like that's jung would call that shadow work you know like working with it not being dominated by it or not suppressing it away and i think that that that's also i mean that would be i would say that would be definitely in in the indian tradition it would be different paths would lead you to different places like i was saying earlier tantra has a different approach than vedanta um in that regard and um but but yeah no that 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 makes sense to me so um i don't know if you want to to have another time to we have can talk another topics uh for now um our time is end yeah yeah <laughs> but i'm very happy that you have a lot of open mind and open topics and we can like play around with this i mean Thank you very much. It's been great. Oh, yeah. Anytime. I would love to, to continue the conversation. And I, a lot of different places we could go. But yeah, today's been wonderful. I really appreciate spending time with you and, and discussing this.